Welcome back to Rich Words Music, where today we're looking at this. It's the Electro Harmonics Spruce Goose Overdrive pedal. Now, the Spruce Goose is based on Marshall's iconic blues breaker circuit, so it's going to give us sparkly low to medium gain overdrive sounds, a really nice open, transparent sort of a tone too, and that promised little bit more. Now, this is a pedal that I bought myself. This video is in no way sponsored or anything like that. There's already hundreds of blues breaker overdrive style pedals out there. I've already got a bunch of them in my collection. Did I I need another one? Absolutely not. Did I want this one because it sounds and looks cool in the videos and online? Yes, I absolutely did. So here it is, and I'm documenting it today for you guys. So what we're going to do in this video then is first I'll tell you about the specs and the features of the pedal, then I'll play it in as many different styles and settings as possible with single coil and with humbucking pickups, and at the end I'll give you a few more detailed opinions that I have about this pedal, having played it pretty extensively since I've owned it. So stick around for that because there are quite a few things to say about this pedal. First then, some information, some specs, and some features. So this pedal was released in October or November of 2023. It'll set you back about $130 in America, similar in euros and similar in British pounds as well. This being an EHX pedal, the final assembly will have been in New York City in America, so take from that what you will. The name the Spruce Goose is a funny one for me. I'm not sure why they went for that. The Spruce Goose is, or was, Howard Hughes's famous plane that never really got off the ground that much. But will this pedal take you to new heights and let you raise your game as a guitar player. Enough of the cheap puns, let's tell you in a bit more detail about the pedal. So we've got the on-off switch here, and it's actually a double function switch. You can press it down as you would a normal foot pedal to turn the pedal on or off, or you can hold it down for certain periods of time to give yourself just a couple of seconds of extra push if you want to come to the fore of the band mix to play a lead line or something like that. Up here we have four controls and a three-way switch. Now we've got a volume control and a gain control and a two-band EQ. We've got a treble control, which I believe to be passive, and a bass control, which EHX state is active. So you can either cut or boost the bass frequencies, which is very useful when it comes to blues breaker type circuits. Now in the middle here, we have a three-way switch, which is called lift. And I guess it gives you lift off to more distortion and more overdrive in your tones. When it's down, it's in the natural position and it doesn't do anything to your signal whatsoever. You've just got your basic low to medium drive, sparkly blues breaker-esque tones. Flick it up to the middle setting and you goose the circuit by nine extra dB. So it's pushing the circuit before you reach the overdrive part of the circuit and really giving you a bit more thump and oomph to your tone. Push it up to the top and you really do get lift off with an extra 21 dB added to your signal. So a whole lot of boost there and we should get a lot more thickness and distortion, but you'll hear all of that in the playing part of the video. It's powered by a standard nine volt power supply or by a nine volt battery, ins and outs, and that's basically it. It looks pretty cool. We've got this nice gray matte design with the spruce goose there on the front in this nice baby sort of a blue. So it's a pretty cool pedal overall. And the next thing that we're going to do is hear it in as many different musical genres as I can muster up today. Blues breakers are great for so many different things and that starts from a clean push. So that's where we're going to start with and we'll kick it up through the notches and hear how driven and how distorted and how heavy we can go with the pedal. So my rig for today is going to be my Hughes and Kettner Black Spirit 200 amp head. We'll be on a very neutral clean sound on the amp for most of the playing part with just a smidgen of reverb too, although we will go up to the crunch channel of the amp to also hear how the Spruce Goose handles it going into an overdriven amplifier. Like I said, we'll start with cleaner tones and we'll gradually get dirtier and dirtier. We'll start with some folk and some pop and some country, stuff like that. Gradually ease through to indie rock and classic rock, then some harder rock and some punk, and we'll tune the guitars down at the end to drop D and try and do a bit of metal if that is a possibility, because why not? We might as well test it. Now, guitar Guitars-wise, I'm going to be using my Fender Telecaster for single coil tones. Note that that guitar does have a neck humbucker in place, but I've got a coil split active at all times, so it's true single coil tones. And for humbucking sounds, we've got my Epiphone Les Paul Traditional Pro. After the playing part is done, I've got a couple of loops for you as well, played through my Boss RC10 looper, one with the Tele and one with the Les Paul, where we really get to twist the knobs and flick that lift switch there, and really hear the extremes to which you can get the Spruce Goose to go. Enough talk then, it's the Electro Harmonics Spruce Goose Overdrive pedal. Let's play it now and we'll speak in more detail about it afterwards.
Okay then, so that was the Electro Harmonics Spruce Goose Overdrive pedal, and I hope you enjoyed the playing and the tones. Leave me a comment down there telling me whether you thought it sounded better with the single coil Telecaster or with the humbucker equipped Les Paul, because it really did react very differently to the two guitars. But anyway, what I'm going to do now is give you a few more detailed opinions about my thoughts having had this pedal and owned it for the past few weeks. We'll start by talking about the things that I like about the Spruce Goose, and happily there's quite a lot, and we'll start with those tones. Now the first thing to say is that this is a very, very versatile pedal, and it handled pretty much anything I threw at it until we started to get pretty heavy, and you heard that during the playing part of the video. But for single coil pickups and for humbucking pickups too, and the humbuckers on my Epiphone Les Paul are very, very hot, this pedal really does sound good. And starting with just a bit of a clean push, it really does that very well, and retains the character of the guitar's tone too, at least in my opinion. But this pedal can do a lot more than that, and as we started to wind up the gain, and as we went through the different lift combinations on the lift switch, we really did get a bunch of different tones in different genres. But I feel that this pedal excels really when it's in the lowest lift setting, and perhaps in the middle one for the single coil pickups. Now, I love the clean push that you can get from it, the really spiky, sparkly country tones and folk sounds and indie tones really work well for me. And with the Les Paul, with the lift switch all the way down and the gain about half the way up, I was getting tones that I was really, really happy with. So it worked great for those kinds of things. As we edged the gain up more and more and did the punk sort of stuff and the progressive rock, you could hear that with the Les Paul that was totally fine, but with the telly, with those less hot single coil pickups, we were reaching the edge of their capabilities. Now of course, if you want heavier tones, there are other pedals, other amplifiers, or as we heard, you can run an overdriven amplifier and use this pedal as a boost for that, and it works really well there too. So there's not a lot that you can't do with this pedal in terms of tones. It's really fantastic for so many different genres, and I can only recommend it if you're looking for a versatile pedal to test out to give you a different flavor of drive tones. One thing I also have to say about the controls on this pedal is that the EQ controls are very, very powerful, and they have to be with this Blues Breaker circuit. Now you could hear with the gain rolled off that the pedal has a propensity to be very, very dark sounding, and I found myself really wanting to wind the treble almost all the way up until we had the gain at about 10 o'clock or something like that. Otherwise, it just sounded way too dark to my ears. Although bear in mind that I am someone who loves a lot of high end in my tone. The gain control is also very powerful. This is an active control, and I found myself reducing the gain and cutting it in many circumstances, particularly with the Les Paul, because it had the propensity there to get really deep and boomy and flubby, and that's not something that I like in my tones. But if that's an effect you want, you can get it in spades with this pedal. So that much for the tones then. What else do I like about this pedal? Well, as 
I said in the intro part, I think it looks really, really cool. So that's always a plus. And for someone superficial like me, that's always going to elevate it above bland looking pedals. I think it's pretty solidly built as well. And for the price point these days, $130, 130 euros, I don't think you can complain too much on that front. It's a nice small size too, so it's going to fit on pretty much any pedal board. But I do think that EHX missed a trick with this one. I think they could have made a Pico version, which is their real mini pedal line, and they could have called it the Spruce Moose. And if you get that reference, I like you a lot. So what about the things that I don't quite enjoy so much about this pedal? Well, there's a couple of things that for me are not quite perfect, and I think a couple of them are actually inherent to the Blues Breaker circuit, so that's just a limitation of what we're working with here. But I alluded to this before, and that's the fact that this can be a very dark pedal until you wind up the gain control. I would just like to have a bit more treble on offer. This is something that I've encountered with other Blues Breaker pedals, and it's just something you need to learn to live with, or you need to brighten up the signal somewhere else in your rig, which is absolutely no problem. But it's something that does take a little bit of getting used to. And something slightly related to that is the fact that, well, every time you change the settings on this pedal, particularly when you up or lower the gain, you really have to tweak the EQ controls and sometimes the volume too to get back to sort of where you were in terms of tonal character and in terms of output level as well. Now, probably with a pedal like this, you're not going to be using it like I was using it in this demo. You're not going to be tweaking it every 30 seconds to show it off. You're going to find the best sound and use it probably at all times. But that's just something that I noticed when I wound up the gain, I needed to turn back the treble. When I wound up the gain with the humbuckers, I needed to edge back the bass at all times. And when I had the gain at lower than nine or 10 o'clock, I really had to boost up the treble in order to have the tones not super dark. So that's something to take into account if you're thinking about this pedal. And the last thing that I want to mention that was just a little bit strange was something that I didn't encounter with the single coil pickups on the telly, but I did with the humbuckers. And you'll probably have heard it. And that's when you flick up to the top position on the lift setting and you're goosing the signal by 21 extra decibels and you get this really, well, it's a hard to describe sound. And I'm going to use the adjective raspy to describe it. It sounds a little bit like this. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a very sort of aggressive sort of sound, and it really does sound like you're pushing the amp and the pedal and your signal into the edge of oblivion. The edge of the stratosphere, perhaps, with a pedal like the Spruce Goose. But it's something that I personally don't particularly like. You can dial it out of the pedal. You don't need to use it, of course. And it might be something that you really like from your tones. It's definitely a punk rock sort of a sound, that's for sure. It's a chaotic sort of overdrive tone, but it's not something that I personally like. And with the humbuckers, it's something that I needed to dial out of my sounds to be happy with the pedal. But apart from that, there's nothing wrong with this pedal whatsoever, and I could heartily recommend it on all fronts. But what if you've been watching this video and you're kind of into the whole Blues Breaker thing and you're wondering what else is out there? Well, happily, every pedal maker on earth has made their own Blues Breaker pedal. And at the moment, you can even buy the newest reissue versions of the legendary Marshall Blues Breaker pedal. And that was the pedal that started it all. Now, the most famous Blues Breaker pedal out there otherwise is gonna be the Analog Man King of Tone. But if you don't wanna wait five years or pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for one of those on the used market, what you could do is go for the officially licensed MXR Duke of Tone pedal, which is a fantastic overdrive pedal. Now, in terms of other blues breakers, my personal favorite is my Wampler Pantheon, which I've had for a few years, and I've done videos of that. You can see one of them just up there. The Pantheon does amazing low and medium gain sparkly overdrive tones, and I actually think that it sounds better to my ears than the Spruce Goose when I use it in its most high gain setting. But that's a personal taste thing for sure. Definitely worth checking out though if you're into the Blues Breaker sort of a thing, but bear in mind that the Pantheon is significantly more expensive than the Spruce Goose. Now otherwise, the most famous Blues Breaker pedal at the moment would be the JHS Morning Glory. I don't own that pedal, but that's something I aim to rectify in 2024. That is a fantastic sounding Blues Breaker overdrive pedal. Really, really good, but again, significantly more expensive than the Spruce Goose. So if you want to go more affordable, there are a number of options. One of my personal favorites would be the New X Morningstar, which I've tested out on the Ace of Tone pedal, and you can see that video there. It's one half of that drive pedal. And of course, you've got something like the Tone City King of Blues, and so on and so on. There are so many Blues Breaker pedals out there, so if you head to any guitar store, you're gonna be able to find a bunch to try, and you can pick the one that works best for you and your rig. At the end of the day then, I'm very pleased with my purchase of the Spruce Goose so far, and I'm gonna be putting it on my pedal board to see how it handles things over the next few months. It works really well with my telly, and it works 
really well with my Les Paul 2, barring those weird raspy tones at super high gain settings, and it works very well for almost all styles of music that I personally play. So if that sounds like something that's going to be worth it for you, head down to your local dealer that stocks these pedals and give it a try, and you never know, it might be something that works for you as well. I hope that this video has answered all of the questions that you might have had about the Spruce Goose, but if there's anything else you want to know, drop me a line down there in the comments and I shall answer to the best of my ability. And if you're still around, it would make my day if you wanted to give the video a like or maybe even sub to my little channel because that really does help. But that's been it for today's video. I've been Rich for Rich Words Music and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.